How to create better prompts. If you've been in the AI game, and I assume you are since you clicked on the video, you know the importance of having great prompts and how one prompt can make the whole difference between the quality of the output that you're getting from the LLM. I've made a different, I've made actually many videos about this in my channel regarding how good prompts can save cost, generate consistent output, and in general, yes, yield way better results and there are many ways to structure prompts in a different in a better manner usually when people create prompts they use it in a very simplistic on the fly kind of prompt without putting a lot of thought into them and this is why many times it seems like llms are hallucinating or the results are not there very often it's because the, your prompt basically sucks so there are many ways to improve your prompts. First of all, there are guidelines provided by Microsoft, by OpenAI, by Claude. Um, there are many uh, prompts libraries, but today I want to share with you something that I stumbled upon, which is called Fabric. Fabric is an open source um, project. It's an open source pro framework for augmenting humans using AI. It provides a modular framework for solving specific problems using a crowdsourced set of AI prompts that can be used anywhere. So I usually, I mostly use Fabric as a resource for getting references for great prompts. And I'll show you a few examples of their amazing prompts in a moment, but let me just share with you a few ideas. So basically, and I'll just read and I'll explain my take on this. So since the start of 2023 and generative AI, we've seen a massive number of AI applications for accomplishing tasks. It's powerful, but it's not easy to integrate the functionality into our lives. In other words, AI doesn't have capabilities, a, a capabilities problem. It has an integration problem. Fabric was created to address this by enabling everyone to granularly apply AI to everyday challenges. So their approach is to break problems into individual pieces, see below, and then apply AI to each one of them, uh, one, one at a time, basically. And you'll see in a moment, what does, does this mean? And, and they call this pattern. So prompts are good for this, but the biggest challenge uh, is a sheer number of AI prompts. There are so many of them. So we all have prompts that are useful, but it's hard to discover new ones, know if they are good or not, and manage different versions of the ones we like. So many people, many pros in the AI space, and I'm not doing, doing this uh, in a, from a sense of disrespect, but never mind, just forget about the quotes. So many people who use AI regularly have already like a bank of prompts that they are using for different use cases. So one of Fabric's primary features is helping people collect and integrate prompts, which we call patterns, into various parts of their life. So Fabric has patterns for all sorts of life and for all walks of life and uh, work activities, including extracting the most interesting parts of a YouTube video and a podcast, writing an essay in your own voice with just an, an idea as an input, summarizing academic papers, creating perfectly matched AI art prompts for a piece of writing, rating the quality of, qu of content to see if you want to read or watch the whole thing, etc. And their approach is interesting. So fabric patterns are different than most prompts you'll see. First, they use Markdown to help ensure maximum readability and, the, and editability. This not only helps the creator make a, good, uh, make a good one, but also anyone who wants to deeply understand what it does. Importantly, this also includes the AI you're sending it to. Here's an example, and we'll cover the examples in a moment. Next, they are extremely clear in their instructions. And since they use Markdown structure to emphasize what they want the AI to do. And finally, we or they tend to system the section of the prompt almost exclusively. In over a year, uh, I mean, in over a year of being heads down with this stuff, we've just seen more efficiency from doing that. If that changes or we're shown data that says otherwise, we will adjust. So basically, um, they invest heavily in the system message and of the okay they just just invest heavily in the system message it's pretty straightforward i don't know even how to um explain this because if you use agents so you have also the system message and you have the description and there are different nuances but in general 
they believe that the system message is the most important part. Now, I'm not going to discuss, um, elaborate about different abilities of Fabric. I just want to show you the patterns because the patterns, in my opinion, are the most imp interesting part here. And these patterns are just different prompts that they have created. And in my opinion, they are very interesting and well built. So here's a list of all the patterns slash prompts that they have. So building an agility story, analyzing answers, analyzing claims, analyzing debates, etc. Uh, checking agreements, cleaning text, comparing and contrasting, create academic paper, create AI jobs analysis, create aphor aphorisms, create a better frame. You can see the list goes on and on and on. Extract wisdom, extract wisdom in a DM, label and rate, official pattern, template, provide guidance, rate AI response, etc. Et so there are a ton of these, and I suggest that you check them all of them out later on. If any anything is if anything is interesting specifically to your field of interest, so definitely check it out. Let me show you a few examples. So this is the first one that I wanted to share with you. So it's it's about rating the value of a post. So I then, this this is how the, the prompt looks like. This is part of the prompt, this is in Markdown, so it looks like this, but let's change it to code. No, let's change it back so it will be easier to read. You will close this, okay. Identity and propose. You are an expert parser and rater of value in content. Your goal is to determine how much value a reader slash listener is being provided in a given piece of content as measured by a new metric called the value per minute, VPM. Take a deep breath and, and think step by step about how best to achieve the best outcome using the steps below. These are the steps. Fully read and understand the content and what is trying to communicate and accomplish. Estimate the duration of the content if it were to be consumed naturally using the algorithm below. And you can see here they use the bullets and here they use numbering. Count the total number of words in a provided transcript. If the content looks like an article or essay, divide the word count by 225 to estimate the reading duration because they want to give value per minute and they assume that every 225 words is a minute. If the content looks like a transcript or a, of a podcast or video, divide the word count by 180 because there are uh, less words per minute in a podcast or a video. Round the calculated duration to the nearest minute. Store the value as estimated content minutes. Next, extract all instances of value being provided within the content. Instances of value are defined as highly surprising ideas or revelations, a giveaway of something useful or valuable to the audience, untold and interesting stories with valuable takeaways, sharing of an uncommonly valuable resource, sharing of secret knowledge, exclusive content that's never been revealed before, extremely positive and or excited reactions to a piece of content if there are multiple speakers or presenters. Based on the number of valid instances, instances of value and the duration of the content, both above, um, both above four fifth and also related to those uh, topics ab above, calculate a metric called value per minute. And the output instruction is output a valid JSON file with the following fields for the input provided. Estimated content minutes, so this is how the JSON is structured. Value instances, so list of valid value instances. VPM, the value, the calculated VPS score. VPM explanation, a one sentence summary of less than 20 words on how you calculated the VPM for the content. And this is the input, this is where the user is supposed to add the transcript or the blog post. So this was one exa example. Next example is answer interview question. Let's close this again. First, they provide the identity for the bot, for the LLM. Then they provide the goal. Then they provide the steps. Then how they expect the output. Then sometimes they show an example and then they leave uh, space for the input. So let's check this out. So, and I think this will be the last, or maybe we do another example afterwards. 
So identity, you are a versatile AI designed to help candidates excel in technical interviews. Your key strength lies in simulating practical conversational responses that reflect both depth of knowledge and real world experiences. You analyze interview questions thoroughly to generate responses that are comprehensive, showing, showcasing the candidate's competence and foresight in their field. The goal is to generate tailored responses to technical interview questions that are approximately 30 seconds long when spoken. Your responses will appear casual, thoughtful, and well-structured, reflecting the candidate's expertise and experience, while also offering alternative approaches and evidence-based reasoning. Do not speculate or guess at answers. The steps. Receive and pass the interview questions to understand the core topics and required expertise. Draw from a database database of technical knowledge and professional experience to construct a first-person response that reflects a deep understanding of the subject. Include an alternative approach or ideas that the interviewee considered adding that to the response. Incorporate at least one piece of evidence or example from past experience to the response. Ensure the response is structured to be clear and concise, suitable for verbal delivery within 30 seconds. Output. The output will be direct first-person response to an interview question. It will start with an introductory statement that sets the context, followed by the main explanation, an alternative approach, and concluding statement that includes a piece of evidence or example. Here's an example. So let's assume the input is, can you describe how would you manage project dependencies in large software development project? And this is the output. In my last project, where I managed a team of developers, we used Docker containers to handle dependencies efficiently. Initially, we considered using virtual environments, but Docker provided better isolation and consistency across different development stages. This approach significantly reduced compatibility issues and streamlined our deployment process. In fact, our deployment time was cut by about 30%, which was a huge win for us. And here you should leave uh, the input for the specific um, interview question. And as I said, this is an example. This is the how they expect the output, output of the LLM. These are the steps. This is the goal and this is the identity. And there are many more like this. So this is for checking an agreement. So you are an expert at analyzing contact and agreement. This is the output section, how, it will, how they expect it to look like. These are the instructions and this is the input. This is where they add the, the user is supposed to add the input. Another example is create a quiz. We can speak, skip this. Let's see the create summary. And this would be the last one. You are an expert content summarizer. Your task, you, you take content in and in and output a markdown formatted summary using the format below. Take a deep breath and think step by step how to best accomplish this goal using the following steps. So these are all the steps. This is the output instruction and this is the input. Awesome. I think that's pretty much it for today, guys. I just wanted to show you how amazing prompts are crafted and this great resource, which is the, the GitHub repository by Fabric by Daniel Meisler. I hope that I'm pronouncing his name correctly. Anyway, if you guys are using LLM often, I highly recommend that you check this out because first of all, by reading all the patterns, you will probably get a better understanding how you can craft better prompts. And second of all, <clears throat> I highly recommend that you just find a way to organize all of these patterns, um, maybe in a, um, in a shortcut, like a can response tool. I have this tool which allows me to create, let's say, test. This is a test of a shortcut. And I can save many prompts over here. And whenever I write this thing, it's going to automatically fill it out. Let's see, test. You see, it immediately pasted everything. So let's say you wanna copy the whole, um, you wanna copy a full pattern or a full prompt. So check agreement, I can just do like this. Copy this whole thing, come to a text, which is this free, tool that I'm using, let's say pattern check. No, let's do PC agreement. 
agreement. So let's, if I want this, I can just come, let's go to Google Docs, create a blank file. PC agreement, so slash P C agreement. And as you can see, it pasted the whole prompt. And this is a very efficient way to work with um, any prompts. And if you create your own prompt library, it's obviously better, but definitely I would suggest just coming here to this amazing resource, copying and pasting, uh, copying and saving any prompt that you think would be handy in your daily work and you're pretty much covered. Obviously keep on checking this repository because it uh, keeps on being updated. Yeah, I guess that's it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed, enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you have any comments or questions or feedback, leave them in the comment section below. Otherwise, if you enjoyed this video, obviously like and subscribe. And until next time, keep on automating.